to begin by telling you guys a, a short story here. Um, after seven years of teaching, a teacher named Vicki Salcheski, uh, she was very burned out of teaching. She didn't, she didn't really want much to do with it anymore, and she had no good reason as to why. Um, one of her solutions to this problem was to just go get her PhD. And she did, in doing this, she learned um, the importance of emotional intelligence and how is it, it is imperative to, uh, to the well-being of teachers and the improvement of student learning. Uh, Dr. David Smith, and he's the superintendent for the Evansville Vanderburgh School Corporation, and in an interview with him with 14 News, um, he stated that um, in response to current uh, emotional intelligence programs in place in the EDSC schools, he stated that it wasn't, um, in speaking with local business owners and professionals, it wasn't the testing skills that were lacking. It was the emotional learning that was lacking um, in these candidates. Emotional intelligence, it's defined as the uh, capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. My name is Sarah Werner. I'm Hannah Denny. And I'm Cameron Bryant. So studies show that um, improving emotional intelligence in students can lead to improving their self-awareness, um, build empathy, communicate more effectively, build uh, healthy relationships, and um, just know how to deal with stress and to deal with life in general. Um, so this directly um, applies to Evansville. Um, with the lacking of these characteristics I just mentioned, one is more apt to um, turn to crime when they don't know how to deal with these emotions or anything, they, they turn to crime. So, with the crime rate of 57 per 1,000 residents, this makes Evansville one of the highest crime rate cities in America, um, which is very surprising to me. Um, and this, uh, yeah, so with that, one's um, ability or chance to be a, a victim of either violent or property crime in Evansville is one in 17, which is also very surprising. You might not know that about your own communities, but that's where we live. And that's why emotional intelligence can be so imperative to getting into schools and getting to these students early. Um, and there was also a study done uh, by the Industrial Psychiatry, or Psychiatry Journal um, where they tested two groups of people, 101 normal test subjects and 101 convicted criminals. They, should, they found that the criminals um, had a significantly lower emotional intelligence rate than the normal test subjects. Um, so this further proves that the improvement of emotional intelligence in students can detour drug addiction, crime activity, and um, self-destructive behavior. Some statistics on the Evansville Vanderburg School Corporation. Um, for those of you that don't know that, that is the school corporation here in, in Evansville and in Vanderburg County. Um, there were 22,601 students in the 40 EBSC schools. And on the Indiana Department of Education's uh, scorecard website, um, today we found, just today, we found that the, we are lower, the EBSC is lower than the state average in the categories of college and career readiness, our graduation rate, and um, student performance. There are 1,600 teachers in the EBSC. There is not a current emotional intelligence uh, platform or requirement for these teachers, and they are, they are only in the beginning stages of a resource for the students. Um, so some additional research that stood out to us was a study done on a group of college students where uh, 213 college students uh, dropped out of college within their first two years of school. And then another group of 213 college students were persistent with their studies and graduated in a four-year time span. And uh, after evaluating their emotional intelligence, um, the 213 that graduated college sh uh, showed significantly <coughs> higher levels of emotional intelligence. And this just goes on to, t uh, to tell you or show you how, um, how important it is to get that emotional intelligence training uh, at, at early stages for our students and to equip our teachers with the skills to uh, teach our students. Which brings us to a problem statement, uh, the lack of emotional intelligence training for EBSC teachers limits their ability to fully utilize current SEL resources uh, in the classroom. Uh, along in that same interview um, with Superintendent Dr. David Smith, um, there was an interview with Susan Phelps, and she was commenting on the importance of game. 
which is a current the current uh, resource for the students. And um, she was asked, or she stated that the emotional intelligence or the scorecard for our children is not, it's more than just a math test or the high risk tests such as the ISTEP testing that they do here in Indiana. Um, it's, it's more about uh, their ability to live their lives to the fullest and their communities and their families. And those are skills that, it, it, you know, you embodies the whole child. You've just got to take care of everything, not just if they can spell and, and add two plus two, but that they can, that they're healthy emotionally as well. Our solution to this problem, it's an emotional intelligence, uh, like a mobile device application. And it would include daily, weekly exercises. And this is aimed at the teachers. Um, we have found that if, in order to teach emotional intelligence, you have to be emotionally intelligent. Um, so this device would be a tool that they could, they could use. Um, it would have be customizable to them as far as notifications, um, the times, the calendars. They could have self-awareness uh, tracking, and it would be shareable with the students. They could there would be activities and stuff they could share with, the, with their students. Um, so some more in-depth curriculum on our application. It would be a module-based application where we cover each module per one week on a nine-week uh, basis. And module one would consist of an emotional intelligence introduction, so some self-management, self-awareness, self-regulation, self-motivation, and empathy information. And module two would uh, teach them important skills in emotional intelligence. Uh, module three would go into verbal communication skills such as active listening, uh, conversation engagement, and then module four would be the nonverbal communication skills, so, such as body language and um, signals that we send to others. Uh, module five would touch on social management and responsibility, so getting into the benefits of emotional intelligence and uh, learning how to use our emotions in a positive manner. Uh, module six would be tools to regulate emotions, so self-management, self-awareness. And module seven, gaining control, so touching on using coping mechanisms and using relaxation techniques. And module eight would be classroom practices, so the role of emotional intelligence in the classroom and uh, implementing the tools that they learn with their students. Uh, module nine would be assessments, so it would touch on module reviews and completion of evaluations for the teachers. So gain, like we said, is the um curriculum incentives thing that they've just started using um, in the EDSC. It is based on um, just practicing these right behaviors with the students, um, just running them through how they're supposed to act. And there's no real um, grit to it to understand where this comes from or why. And especially for the teachers, they're just laying this out for their students to run through. Um, there's, there's hardly any understanding for them and application for them. Um, GAIN stands for Growth in Academics through Innovation and Neuroeducation. So the EI app would be a great partner for this in the sense that it would be toward, focused towards the teachers and make sure that they have a full understanding and application to their own lines of emotional intelligence. Um, they're both very proactive approaches. Um, we both think they're great, but GAIN is missing something, and the EI app can satisfy that. Um, through benefiting the teachers and students simultaneously, um, increasing teacher understanding of GAIN, and uh, giving the teachers tools and skills to fully utilize this GAIN curriculum that they have just started using. Um, and also it is accessible from anywhere because it is a mobile app. So our value proposition, um, it's, it states that this emotional intelligence application would allow training and growth for teachers anytime, anywhere. The application will benefit teachers and students simultaneously. It will also increase the teacher's ability to fully utilize current SEL resources, thus increasing student understanding and student learning. Um, so the key part would be the EDSC, because that's who we'd be licensing our application to, um, the Indiana Department of Education, uh, United Way, which was the grant that GAIN got uh, for funds to implement that into the classrooms. So we're hoping to use some of that for our uh, app emotional intelligence application as well. And then some key activities is technical support for our applications of so security and other things like that that go along with the application, uh, marketing, getting our product out there to the uh, schools, software development, uh, to, we need developers to create our app, and beta testing, so starting it small somewhere and see how it goes, 
and then some key resources, uh, we're a nonprofit status, and then social psychologist, um, software developer again, and some marketing materials. So the teachers obviously are our specific target um, for our first primary customer, and the EBS, the administration as well. The students are our secondary customer, um, which the teachers would be gaining this information, this knowledge of their um, own emotional intelligence, and then applying that through their teaching methods using GAME. Um, the community, like I said in the very beginning, with the crime rates that EI could help reduce, and future employers, because the EI um, improvement can help make these um, kids, and the teachers, of course, better employees. Um, the channels that we would reach these um, customers are through social media, um, teacher conferences. A lot of schools have little micro-conferences where they come and bring some materials in for their teachers to take a look at and go through. We would hope to be a part of that. Um, board meetings where they discuss many issues within the school or some potential things that they would want to bring about um, in their school system. And having school visits, going in and talking with the teachers, seeing how it's going, and um, giving them the material. As far as the cost structure goes, um, there would be, it'd be the same as most applications on your phone. Um, there would probably be buying, buying rates, uh, like structured how an entire school system, uh, such as the EBSC, with 1,600 teachers, that would a buy-in deal. So the more, the more um, applications that you would need, the lower the cost would be. Uh, monthly subscriptions and so forth there. Um, the revenue stream to be lic licensing our pr product uh, of app to as many schools as possible in the EBSC or just to the overall school system. So in conclusion, there's no um, one size fits all with emotional intelligence. Everybody has different emotional needs. Um, Vicki Zalcheski again, she said, teachers who have um, high social emotional competencies they're both, they're, it's high in both self and social awareness and can recognize and manage their own emotions as well as understand how their emotions, emotional responses impact others. Thanks. Thank you.